All right, let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's get up and at them. We successfully completed our 21 day fast. <sighs> Come on and all the cheers, all of the cheers, all of the excitement. Keisha, how you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Let's get at it. Leslie, how are you doing? Let me see what we got here. Oh. Oh. I, oh. Very good. Very good. $8. No sorry, Bob. We ain't going for that, man. Let's do this. Who's on the line, Mr. Charlie? My stuff has been cut. No, we're going to get at it. All right. How y'all doing this morning? How was your weekend? I want to do this. I want to start by saying this really quickly if I can. Please do me a favor. And that is, do me a favor. Do me a favor and um, go to my public figure page. I cannot get that in you enough. Go to my public figure page. Everybody say, go to my public figure page. Go to my, now I'm getting messages in here back and forth. That's why I'm kind of, I'm sorry. I got a little distracted. Go to my public figure page and like that because these lives will be transferred over there. And we're going to be doing all of our Monday and Friday pieces over there on my public, public figure page. So you want to make sure that you like my public figure page and that you follow me on my public figure page because um, I'm starting a series. In fact, the Lord laid on my heart. I'm starting a series and y'all know I'm serious about it all the way because I have uh, my leather bound Bible. Now, I've probably got 15 Bibles in my office, probably, probably more than that, but that would just be a rough estimate. 15 various Bibles. I usually will use my iPad to reference scripture and all the members of our church and all those who um, follow and view our services. Y'all know, y'all will see me generally read from a phone or an iPad, but God has really laid on my heart that it's time for me to kind of delve in and to teach you. And so I'm starting today out of the book of Psalms. So I want you to write that down. Psalms. It was great. It was great. I'm glad to hear that Kwanzaa. Everybody's weekend was good. They're great. I'm glad to hear it was great. I had a great time. Got to throw the football with my son a little bit yesterday and, um, you know, do some other things. After church, we had a wonderful service. If you have not been a part of our services, you want to go and check out the grand finale. Now, I got messages yesterday, y'all, uh, from people whose households were blessed by the message in the services on yesterday. As I talked about the arrow. And I talked about how an archer, when there's tension on the line, there's tension on the line in your life, that's because God is drawing you back. And so just like an archer, there's tension on the line and he has to pull you back in order to shoot you forward. So um, I had a parent reach out to me and tell me, listen, he had to explain to his son that I'm pulling you back for some stuff, but it's for your own good so you can go further in life. I'm going to start today in Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter one. So what I am going to be doing, and this is why it's so important for you to follow me on my public figure page. What I'm going to be doing is I am going to literally be line upon line, precept upon precept, teaching in these Facebook lives uh, from the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms is the largest book of the Bible. Let me do this first before I even get started because uh, I'm running against the clock. And so my son is start back to uh, he is start back going. He's starting to go back to school today, and uh, so I'm going to take him to school. And so I've got to get this into y'all 15 to 20 minutes. So I've been doing these 45 minutes, two and three messages in one. So I'm going to have to reduce that to one chapter per Monday and Friday. And I'm going to expound on some things, but I promise you this: there's going to be enough meat in it to carry you for the rest of the day and even the rest of the week. So do me a favor. I'm looking down here, but I'm going to look up here at y'all, and this is why it gets kind of awkward. Um, because I want everybody to be on the same page and we're going to be there, y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of the Bible says that God is not, um, God is patient that he's given everyone a chance to repent. It's not that he's slack concerning this promise or his return, but he wants everybody to have enough time to repent. So here's what I want to do really quickly. 
I want you to pray with me. And if you've got some prayer needs, I want you to put those prayer needs up. I want to pray with and for you. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Okay, let's turn the volume up there. Let's pump up the volume over here. Okay, there we go. So I want you to do me a favor. If you've got prayer needs, I want you to submit those prayer needs and requests. I am going to pray with and for you. And uh, that's what I do. That's what I love to do. So I want to know how can I pray for you on today? Let me know. And then we are going to get started. All right. If not, I am going to pray. And here's what you can do as well. Once I start praying, if you put up your prayer request, just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. And it is so. Yes, Lord. That is that is you agreeing with what's being said. Amen. Let the church say amen. That's that's you in agreement. That's you, that's you giving your vote. Uh, if this were a board meeting, and that's you giving your vote, saying I. And so I want you to do this. Uh, I want you to touch and agree with me, all right? So God, we thank you for this weekend that you've allowed us to come through. We thank you, Lord God, for another day. We pray for everyone, uh, amen, whose, whose children are returning to school. The numbers of COVID are spiking, but God, we still trust you. We put our confidence in you. So God, even now, we ask that you would cover our hearts and our minds. Help us to be who you call for us to be. God, bless your people. God, we ask that you would revive us even in this season. God, that we would not grow weary in doing well, but in due season, we know we shall reap if we do not faint. So God, I pray and ask that every person who's faint-hearted, every person who's grown discouraged, every person who's grown weary, God, that you would give us, boost our morale, give us greater confidence, give us greater faith, give us greater expectation. God, we believe that you are still up to something in our lives. So God, we're not throwing in the towel. We're not giving up. We're not scrapping 2020. We still believe there's more in this year to be done, to be discovered, to be accomplished, to be completed. God, we believe this year still has blessings for us. So God, what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on you. As Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, I press forward, I reach ahead toward the mark of the high calling. So God, we ask that you would help us in this season to focus on what matters most. I want somebody to type that out. God, help us to focus on what matters most. Help us not to get lost. Help us not to get distracted. Help us not to get caught up with all of the noise. But God, help us to focus on what matters most, and that is our growth in you. We thank you, God, that you've kept us in this season. You've protected our families. You've covered us and kept us from COVID, from sickness, from accidents, from disease. All of those things are a testimony, God, that you are the God who preserves us and keeps us. Every single one of these prayer requests for children, for loved ones, God, I pray right now, I touch and agree for each and every person who has a need. God, meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know and can see better than I can. You know what people are in need of. You know what they're asking you to do. And God, we ask that you would do it as only you can. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right, listen, here's what I'm going to do because my time is so short. I'll come back. I'll come back. Now, I have to go to the dentist today. Y'all pray for me at the dentist. I'm not a person who loves the dentist at all. I got to get my teeth um, cleaned. I start to say whitened. Uh, I'm going to do that too now. Amen again. Uh, but listen, I want you to do this. I want you to open up your, your Bibles. If you have a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, just Google it up. Psalm chapter 1. I want to turn to Psalm chapter 1, but I want to also highlight something that I taught on yesterday. Uh, on yesterday... We shared a message. I, let me do this. It's so important. Yesterday, I shared a message entitled, Work the Way. Work the Way, okay? Let, let me just give y'all a sliver, a sample of that. Work the Way. The scripture says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, don't grow weary in doing well, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint or lose heart, some texts read. Let me give this to you. Paul is speaking to the church at Galatia. It's a church that he founded. They're dealing with trials. They're dealing with difficulty. They're dealing with pressure. Excuse me. Pressure bearing down on me, pushing down on you. No man acts for. How many of y'all heard that song? Pressure. Doom, 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 doom. I think Ice, Ice, Ice Baby came from that beat. Okay, so pressure is something that we all face. So as he writes to this church, I want you to get this. 
He gives them a command or a challenge, but he also gives them a promise. He says, don't grow weary in doing well, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint. Now, I want us to understand something, that there are moments where, you know, we get faint-hearted, where we just want to give up. We want to throw in it. You know what I've discovered? We're closest to reaching our goal or something big happening in our lives in the moment that we want to give up. That give up moment is just the moment right before God does something significant. I want somebody to get this. Don't give up while you're going through because on the other side is your goal. God allows us in those moments to feel the heat and the pressure just before the breaking of day. The darkest hour is just before the break of day. So it's so important for us to understand this. So go back to YouTube. Go back and check out the message and the services on yesterday. Our praise team was phenomenal. But I shared a message entitled, Work the Wait. I want to ask you the question. What are you working on while you are waiting for God to give you what you want? What are you working on? I want to say this. What are you working on now that's going to move you into your next what are you working on right now? Well, I want a job. I want, you know, I want to, I want, I want this to be my career. I, you know, I want this. Okay. What are you working on? If you're a single man and you're working on building a family or a home, and you desire a wife and children, you need to be working on your credit. You need to be working on your money. You need to be working on your finances. You need to be working on, you know, making sure your business is in order because if a man cannot manage his own affairs, he cannot manage an entire family or more people. Can I go here? This is why, <laughs> this is why sometimes young ladies get with a guy and they end up having a child with the guy, but he's not mature enough to manage a family. Amen? Okay? Because he's still maturing and developing himself. Now watch this. Women mature faster than men. We know that. So if you're if you're waiting on something to happen, I want to ask you the question, what are you working on while you wait? All right, so get to work. Somebody type that out, get to work. So that's what I'm going to say about that. Then I'm going to get to Psalm chapter one. Okay, so Psalm chapter one, I want to read this to you. I want to read it to you. I'm going to come back and put this as the caption because it's so important. It's so important because I want you to hear this in your hearing. I want, I want to read this in your hearing so that you can really get this. Here's what it says. It's just a couple of short verses. I'm going to be combing through the book of Psalms. Y'all ready? Psalms is the largest book of your Bible. Psalms has 150 chapters. Y'all own it. Get to work. Psalms has 150 chapters, okay? Psalms is a book that gives testimony, songs, and it testifies about all the different things God has done in various individuals' lives. It's a number of authors in the book of Psalms. David, now get this, David writes over half of the Psalms in the Bible, King David. David shares his experiences while he was on run, while he was on the run as a fugitive. He shares his experiences while he has to flee from his son, um, uh, Absalom. He, he shares his experiences of, you know, difficulty, all those things, you know, his, his affair with Bathsheba, Psalm chapter 51. He shares all of this. So Psalms is so rich, and I want you to get this because it is a book that will give you the strength and encouragement you need. You can draw strength from the book of Psalms in those moments that you need God most. All right? Y'all there? Sounds like Luther and set it off. Here's what it says, Psalm chapter 1. <clears throat> Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now get this nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord, that means the book, the teachings, the precepts of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Watch this. The ungodly are not so. But they're like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, let me, it's a lot to that. Let me just break this down. 
Y'all ready? Everybody tell me y'all ready. Who's ready for this? I'm going to expound on, on chapter one. Tell me you're ready. I know we got a little bit of a lag there. I got just a little bit of time. and I'm going to give y'all as much as I can. Okay, okay, here it is. This particular passage of scripture in this Psalms breaks down an individual who has longevity. Somebody say longevity. All right, Miss Nikki, Tawana, everybody, longevity, okay? Longevity, oh God, I want you to get this. Some people are satisfied with temporary success. What the psalmist wants us to learn how to do is look long range. He wants us to learn to look long term. Longevity is when you have success that's continual. Notice that he closes out this psalm and says, his leaf shall not wither. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now watch this. When that tree is planted, it's already planted by a source of water that will give it everything that it needs to sustain it. So it has long-term potential and growth. God wants you to understand that your life is like a seed, that that seed is planted in the ground, okay? In fact, the scripture says that we are the seed of a woman. When, when God curses Adam uh, and, and Eve for their disobedience, he says, your seed, your seed, the, your children, the seed of Abraham. So you and I are like a seed. A seed has potential, but a seed has not yet fully developed. The seed is sown into the ground and it's dark and it doesn't look like it has any ability to sprout. In fact, this is why some people leave you in your seed stage because it seems as though you've been buried. They don't realize you've been planted. In fact, notice what he says. He's been planted next to a river of water, okay? So that means that the seed is going to grow. It has inevitable growth potential. It is going to grow. It's, it's planted. It's put in a place, in a position that it's going to not only be sustained, but it's going to grow and thrive. I want you to get this. The seed is planted. By the tree, it, it, it's like a tree planted by the river of water. Okay, so that means that while it's planted in this place, now get this, it's going to grow and it's going to mature and it's going to develop, but it's going to take time. Can I give this to y'all? What God is going to do in your life is not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over time. I want somebody to get that. What God is going to do in your life is not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over time. And this is why you have to understand. The scripture says there is seed, time, and harvest. I want to say it again. There is seed, time, and harvest. The farmer sows the seed, but the farmer does not go looking the next day to see if the seed is grown. But there's some things in this particular chapter I really want you to get. So you're likened unto a tree. You're, you're a seed first, and then you become a tree. Now notice what he says he says that blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Y'all, it may take me a couple weeks just to deal with chapter one. I'm going to take my time with this. He says that the man who is blessed, he does not stand in the way of sinners. Watch this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know what that means? He doesn't take his cues from people who don't have a relationship with God. He doesn't walk to the drumbeat of people who don't pray. He doesn't get his advice and his counsel. She does not get her advice from people who don't have a relationship with God. And notice the progression. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You notice the progression? He walks past. He doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor does he stand around and listen to the wrong people. Because what happens is, then he says, he does not take a seat with the scornful. Okay, he's walking, then he stops, then he sits. What this psalmist wants us to understand, and I want you to get, is that life is to be lived under the counsel and under the wisdom of God. Now, I want you to get this. When we talk about longevity, longevity is long-term success. I want to say this. Sometimes the reason it takes you longer to get to where you're going 
is because God is going to keep you longer than he was somebody else. Let me put it this way. David had an anointing. Saul had an anointing, okay? Saul is anointed to be the first king. David is anointed to be the second king, okay? Saul is anointed overnight. Samuel sees Saul. He anoints him. He becomes the king. But Saul doesn't last long in a position. Saul remains the king for a short period of time. David has to wait a while between the time he's anointed to be king and the time he's appointed to be king. Now watch this. But David has what the scripture calls an everlasting throne and kingdom. Now watch this. Because when God does something in your life, when he intends for it to be long term, he takes you the long way. Remember when, when, when the scripture says when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and he didn't take them the shortcut because he knew they weren't ready for battles. He knew there were some fights that they weren't ready for. So he took them the long way because God was preparing them so he could position them. Because if you don't get preparation before you get the position, the position won't be permanent. But preparation puts you in a position so that you have the wisdom and the skill and the wit and the ability and the experience. And now, this is just for some people who got some experience. I need some mature people on the line who can say, I'm finally in a place and a position where I can apply wisdom to situations. I've learned to take my time. I don't rush to judgment. I don't rush into decisions because experience has taught me to use wisdom. Now, watch this. God allows us to have seasons of preparation before he puts us in certain positions. I'm going to preach this thing the way God give it to me. If God does not prepare you for the position, the position won't be permanent. This is why the scripture says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, even when it talks about a pastor, I want you to get this. The scripture says that a pastor must not be a novice. He must not be a new Christian. He must not, and then here's what it says. First Timothy chapter three says that the pastor should not be a novice. He shouldn't be a rookie. He shouldn't be somebody who's new to the faith because he hasn't been battle tested or proven. And then he says, lest he fall in the same condemnation of Satan because titles and position, you get pride. I want to say this. Titles and position causes people to stumble because they get more caught up in the title and the position than they do in the purpose. I want to give this to you. I'm going to, I'm going to take my time with Psalm chapter 1. If I, if, I don't, if I don't expound the whole chapter line upon line in this session, I'm going to give you what God has put in my spirit to give you. I want, I want you to get this. I'm not caught up in titles. I'm caught up in task. This is why when people come to the church or they come to a business, be very leery of people who want titles. Be very careful giving people. The Bible says don't lay hands on any man suddenly. It's not about the title, it's about the task. Joseph gets the position of prime minister because he could fulfill the purpose. I want somebody to get this. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna stir this Kool-Aid up. Y'all know it takes time to stir it up. Y'all know, my, my, my wife asked me the other day, you know, I, I told her when I was a kid, how many of y'all remember, now I'm gonna go back. We drank Fagos and we drank Wildwoods. Now those were the knockoff pops. When we did get pop, it was Fago or Wildwood. Y'all know nothing about that, some of y'all. Or, or when we did get Pepsi or Coke, it was in the bottles. Now, she said, well, what do y'all drink? I said, well, we drank Kool-Aid because you get 10 cent a pack. And we mix up Tropical Punch and Grape and Mystery Mix. You know, we mix up our Kool-Aid. And so when you put the sugar in there, you got to stir it up just right because the sugar goes straight to the bottom. So I want to stir this thing up so it really gets evenly, evenly stirred and all of the ingredients are put in the right places. Are y'all are y'all uh, how many of y'all remember getting making Kool-Aid and then you pour the Kool-Aid into the ice tray and you made your own popsicles? <laughs> y'all ain't talking back to me. I'm talking about back in the day when you had the, the bologna with the red, with the red string around it. When you when you got that bologna and you cut and you made four slits and made fried bologna. Come on, with some mustard. Some of y'all don't know nothing about mustard sandwiches, sugar sandwiches. Come on now. When you used to make your own, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 what is that, cinnamon toast in the oven, all right? So, so I told her that. So now I want, what I want you to understand is I want to stir this thing up. I want to stir this thing up. I want you to get this. Don't get so enamored with position and power that you forget the purpose. Remember, Esther gets the position 
But her uncle had to come to her and pull her by her coattail and say, now hold on, hold, now hold on, Esther. Hold on, Esther. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, Esther. Esther, don't forget where you came from. Can I tell y'all why we're on the front lines? I'm going to preach. I'm going to give this to y'all while I got it. David, come on. I'm going to give this to y'all while I got it. While I got it. I want you to get this. God has blessed me, opened up so many different doors. But the reason I'm on the front line, pushing policies, working for our community, making a difference outside of the pulpit context and the church context is because of who much is given, much is required. I want somebody to get this. I'm not so caught up and consumed with position and title that I can't perform a menial task. I want you to get this. Jesus came from heaven to earth and he got down on his knees and washed the disciples' feet. See, the problem with some people is you too haughty for God to take you higher. Some people, the reason they can't go higher is because they don't know how to humble themselves. If you would learn how to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, when God gets ready, he'll elevate you. Some of y'all, God can't lift you because he knows he'll lose you. Some people God can't bless with more because he knows as soon as he gives you more, you're going to act sedity. Your nose is going to be in the air. You're going to forget where you came from. You're going to treat other people like they are under you. God says, but the blessed end of it, put on your clothes right now. Come on fast. Quick in a hurry. Socks and shoes and all. Get ready. We about to roll. Okay, here it is. Y'all get me in real time. Come on. Grab you something to eat. Let's rock and roll, man. So I want you to get this. He says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He does not walk in the count. He looks long term. Can I give you all this real quick? I may not get through all of it today. It's on a Monday. Please, do, do. I promise y'all we in chapter one. So y'all know Friday, I'm coming back to get this. I'm sharing this with y'all. I want you to get this. Please hear me on today. Please hear me on today. Longevity looks at relationships long term. See, the reason some people use people and value things is because they don't understand that relationships are wealth. They don't understand. See, some people will burn bridges, cut people loose, switch up on people, change on people. That, you, you, you're short-sighted. You know how you can tell somebody who's short-sighted? Because they burn good people. I'm going to say this. Short-sighted people abuse good people. I'm going to just let that marinate it. I'm, I'm going I'm to let that get in your spirit. I want to say this again. Narrow, short, narrow-minded, short-sighted people take kindness for weakness. They take people who are nice as being naive. I'm going to let that, I'm just going to let that, I'm going to let that just go in your mind. Some people take meekness for weakness. Oh, they, they don't. They let me do that to them. No, I, I watched you while you did it. I let you put the noose on your own neck. Y'all not talking back to me. I told y'all God will always balance out the books. And there's some people, I want you to get this. This is why I want you to hear me. They didn't take advantage of you. They set a trap for themselves. I want you to get this. And I want you to process it. They didn't take advantage of you. They set a trap for themselves. See, they think they got over on you. But the old mother used to say, you might get by, but you won't get away. Because it looked like you got by, but it's going to catch up with you in the end. Now, I'm going to work on Psalm chapter 1. Y'all, I'm going to take the liberty right now. Though. I want you to get this. This is why, let me, tell, let me help you understand this. God is always going to see to it that you are blessed beyond the people who abused you. God will always see to it that you stay ahead of the people. Look, look, look here, let me show you. It's always going to move like this. It, it's not going to move like you being here and then moving here. No, it's not. It may look like it at times, like they're getting ahead. God is always going to keep you a step ahead of them. I want you to hear me. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. And sometimes God has to let the, oh God. I, have I got 10 people on the line? I want you to get this. Sometime God lets people do certain things to you because he's going to bless you out of it. 
This is why Joseph said, what you meant for evil, God turned it around and worked it for my good. I'm going to close on this. I feel like having church all by myself. I want you to get this. The scripture says in the book of Genesis that Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. That's what it says. It says they sold him. But then in the book of Psalms, it says God sent him to Egypt. Oh, you missed what I said. This is a shout and a sermon all by itself. Well, pastor, which is it? Did his brothers sell him or did God send him? Both hands. God used them selling him as God sending him. Because God will sometime let them look like they're abusing you, but it's really advancing you. Some of it. I want somebody up in this house to give God some glory for every time they cheated you out of money. Every time you loaned them some money, they never paid it back. Every time you were good to them and they twisted the story and made you the villain and them the victim. I need somebody to give God some glory every time people walked away from you after you've been good to them. I need you to give God some glory for him always making sure you still come out on top. I just need five people. Are there 10 people this Monday morning who will give God some glory, who can say thanks be to God, who always causes me to come out on top. I dare you to rise and shine and give God some glory. I'm gone. I want you to understand this. God used them selling you as his way of sending you. Oh, God, I have church all by myself. I'm going to close here with this. I want you to understand all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All things, the good and the bad. All things, the big and the small things. All things, betrayal and rejection. All things, manipulation and lying. All things, lack and bonuses. All things. I need somebody just to give God praise for all things. I may not be feeling my best this morning, but I'm going to give him praise for all things. Uh, it may not be perfect in my life, but I'm going to bless him always. And if the scripture says that we ought to give praise at all times and it always ought to be on our mouth, now is a good time. Come on, give God some glory up in his house. I'm gone. David, let's go. We got to go, son. I'm gone, y'all. I'll get back to Psalm chapter one. I'll get back to Psalm. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hold me, Holy Ghost. I want you to get this. All things, it says in Genesis, they sold him. God said, no, they thought they sold him. I use them selling him as the vehicle to advancing. I use them turning her down as the vehicle to redirect her attention. I use them throwing them away as the opportunity for somebody else to find them. I use them talking about them as a means of giving them advertisement. Y'all, I want to turn this loose. Somebody was hating on my post the other day, and they'll probably see this, and I want them to. Y'all, this was amazing to me. They were hating on my post, and then they shared it. And I'm like, wow, free advertisement. I want you to understand this. I said they hating on it. And then they said, this, that post I was talking about, yada, yada. I said, well, thank you. Because not everybody is of your opinion. And some of the people you shared that with, the Holy Ghost going to get them. And say, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. I want you to understand this. Y'all not hearing me? I'm gone. God uses all things. I need somebody to give God some prayer. Now, this is for the straight up bona fide, sanctified survivors. This ain't for everybody. This is for people who don't live through a few things. This is for some people who've watched God pull them out of some situations. This is for people who can give God some glory when you look back over your life and you recognize God has blessed you and kept you. I'm gone. All things. Y'all have a good Monday. Make moves this Monday. Love y'all.